So, Jeff, we're looking for the Devil's Footprint in North Kingston, Rhode Island. Is that what we're doing today? That's the plan, right? All right. Well, how do we know if we find it? Well, you know, sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes all you have to do is look for a sign. Ooh, you mean like a cosmic sign, clouds parting, smoke well, signals, what? No. Tell me what that street sign says right over there. Devil's Foot Road. I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Osher, and welcome to episode 48 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. We're on a mission to chronicle every legend in New England one week and one story at a time. We've made it 48 consecutive weeks so far. Wow. And we'd love your help getting involved in our community, our movement. We believe these legends are still around because they have something to tell us. So join our super secret Facebook group, leave comments on our website at OurNewEnglandLegends.com, or consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. Just go to patreon.com slash New England Legends and get early access to new episodes plus bonus episodes only for our patrons. Now, we believe that these legends, they bring us together. They do. Right? So please tell your friends about our podcast, share it, and review it on iTunes. And call or text our legend line anytime, 617-444-9683. If you listen at the end of this week's story, you can hear our latest voicemail. All right, Jeff, we're searching for the devil in New England, not in Georgia. No. No, he went down there a long time ago. Now he's in New England. He's Looking for him in New North. England. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that, you know, we've done that before, haven't we? We have. The last time was way back in episode six when we traveled to Manchester, Maine, in search of a mark left by old Scratch himself. But this time we're looking in Rhode Island. And if we follow the signs, namely the street sign that reads Devil's Foot Road, <laughs> I'm guessing we'll find what we're looking for. That's the plan. Devil's Foot Road is a relatively short street that runs parallel to Route 403 in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. The street takes its name from a curious footprint found in a rock just off this road. A rock we hope to find today. Uh, maybe we should pull the car right over here? We're going to have to walk a little ways into the woods here by the train tracks. All right, while we head out to the woods, I think we should set up this legend. Good idea. Now, there's a few different versions of this story that vary slightly from each other. There always is. It's to be expected. Uh, back in colonial times, a native woman was said to have murdered a white man in the town of Wickford, which is the next town north of here. So why did she kill him? We don't know. I, that's the weird thing. We can only assume she had her reasons. So right after the murder, the native woman flees south to right about here, right where we are right now. Right here in the woods along this ledge of rock? Right here. Wow. The murderous maiden gets just about this far when she stops to pray. That's when an angry Englishman mysteriously appears before her and says, Walk with me a little while. The woman is uncomfortable. Something about this man seems off. She tries to flee, but he grabs her arm. So she desperately pleads to her God, Help me, Hobomako! And that's when the Englishman drops his disguise, revealing himself to be the devil. He says, I'm Hobomoko. The creature thunders. The girl tries to run. She digs one foot into the rock, but then the devil grabs her by the waist. He stomps his foot right into this rock, and both the devil and the woman fly high into the air, high over Newport, all the way to Purgatory Chasm in Middletown, where the devil tosses the wicked woman into the sea. And they say to this day, you can still see the woman's footprint in the rock, and near that print, the mark of the devil's cloven hoof. And all this went down right here. That's what they say. So I guess we should look around these rocks, around this area. We should look. Let's walk along this ledge that runs parallel to the train tracks. Are you uh, finding anything, Ray? Nope. Nothing over here. What about you? No, nothing yet. All right, wait. I think I found something. Oh, man, yeah. I think that's it. Okay, describe what you see. All right, this mark in front looks exactly like a human footprint. It does. You put down there. Yeah. You could even say that... It's the right foot with the arch on the left side. That would be our Native American woman. Wow. And maybe about 12 inches behind, it looks like the deep imprint of a horse hoof. And there's Hobomoko, or wow. Beelzebub, depending on who you ask. You can see a photo of these prints on our website at OurNewEnglandLegends.com. Click on episode 48. Then they fly way over Newport, all the way to Purgatory Chasm in Middletown. Not to be confused with the other purgatory chasm in Sutton, Mass. That's right. That's a different story for another day. But man, those Puritans were obsessed with the devil, weren't they? They were. So Middletown, Rhode Island is about 12 and a half miles as the crow flies. Or as the devil flies with a <laughs> Native American woman in tow. Right. But I don't understand how Hobomoko is 
also the devil. How did that happen? Hobomoko is a fascinating deity from the tradition of the Pequot, the Mohegan, and the Narragansett tribes. Uh, he can sometimes be described as good. He's sometimes as bad. He seems to play by his own rules. His voice can be heard as mighty thunder or soft quakes, depending on his mood. So considering this woman had just murdered a man, perhaps she called out to Hobomoko to save her because she knew he was really her only chance for help. The other side of this coin is the Puritan attitude in those early days. What do you mean? It's not like Hobomoko was a Puritan god. No, but these Puritans were on a mission to convert who they viewed as savage Indians. Right. So if you can't convert someone, the next best thing to do is undermine their belief system. Oh, I get it. So you start explaining to the natives that you know the god they're referring to. It's the devil, a great trickster, something evil who influences them. And their only redemption, of course, is a Christian god. Of course. Over time, the colonists continue to explain that the Native American gods aren't the true gods. And when you repeat something long enough... And when you appear to be winning, like you have superior firepower and resources, you're yeah. gaining land, and the Native Americans are losing populations by the day, it becomes clear that maybe the gods of the white man are indeed superior to yours. And then Hobomoko becomes another name for the devil. And if we place this story into an historical context, it becomes even more relevant. All right, tell me how. In 1671, this rock right here became a boundary marker for the settlers of Phone's Purchase, which means there was an agreement with the natives, and now this land was no longer considered Narragansett. This story is widely circulated among colonists because the moral of it is, if a Native American messes with a white man, even their own gods will turn on them. It serves as a warning to the natives and a reminder that God is on the side of the colonists. And, of course, the King Philip's War goes down a few years later in 1675. Right. It's still the bloodiest conflict per capita in British or American history, meaning the largest percentage of the population died in that war compared to any other. So, of course, this tale is going to make the rounds during that time period. Yeah. The story of the Devil's Footprint first made it into print in 1850. And here we are, still talking about it centuries later, right next to a road officially named Devil's Foot Road. Yeah. Next to some strange prints in rock that definitely look like they could be footprints. And now I'm wondering if a legend can stick around for centuries. And if these footprints are here, maybe this is more than just a story. At some point, it's always more than just a story. As long as these marks in the rock survive, we're going to keep sharing this legend. And speaking of sharing legends, we love when you call or text our legend line. The number is 617-444-9683. Now this week, we got a voicemail from a New England transplant who moved out west. He remembers hearing a story from his childhood in Atrium, New Hampshire. Hey guys, this is Kevin Carlo calling from Palm Springs, California. Uh, growing up, my family had a little place uh, on a you know, lake in uh, Antrim, New Hampshire. And our uncles and my dad used to terrorize us with the story of Three Finger Willie. So supposedly Three Finger Willie was chopping wood over by a Boy Scout camp across the lake. One day the boys decided to play a prank on him, and he chopped off his thumb and his forefinger. So then he'd go around trying to get revenge on any boys in Scotty. And she'd have this axe in one hand and this mutilated hand with the other one, and he'd go around tapping on windows and opening up tent flaps with it. So I wasn't sure if this was a real legend or a family legend, but I figured you guys would be guys to ask, so thanks a lot. Love the show. Bye. Ooh, that reminds me of that Fingernail Freddy legend that we covered back in episode 22, it doesn't it? It does, I know. Nothing like a disfigured man terrorizing children. <laughs> so we'd like to thank Lorna Nagara and Zach Bagans for lending their voice acting talents this week. Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures? Yeah, wow. that guy. Thanks for slumming it with us, Zach. <laughs> and our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think.